Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. This is going to be the last video I'm going to film here in my university, at my university. And yeah, what should I say? I'm going to get my blackboard in my own apartment, in my recording studio pretty soon, 24th of February. And I'm totally excited about that. But before we get to our new blackboard, I would like to take a look at this problem with you today. A pretty golden problem. It really doesn't seem exciting at first sight, but we would like to solve 4x on this one. 2 to the x plus 4 to the x equals 8 to the x. It's going to be quite exciting. But before we get into the main video, I would like to give a huge shout out to the creators of PDF Element Pro iSkySoft for sponsoring this episode of doing some number theory, I suppose. PDF Element Pro is a software compatible with Windows and Mac that allows you to edit every PDF freely, making it a strong tool that everyone should have at their hands. Some of the stronger features include annotating a PDF, converting it into Excel or OpenOffice documents, or that you can even turn it into images. Also, you are able to detect your own handwriting if you take a photo, turn it into a PDF and perform an OCR to digitize your handwritten notes. Honestly, this last one came as a big surprise to me and I have used it before. It works quite well, actually. One feature that I use a lot is the rearranging of pages feature. Go to the page tab and move the pages around freely. You are also able to delete certain pages or crop them into the size that you want. Also, do not miss out on all the other graph editing, picture saving and form editing options that come with PDF Element Pro. So if this feels like it's something for you, if you think you could benefit from such a great PDF editor, then take a look at the top of the description. There you can find a link to get 50% of PDF Element Pro. So you can support the channel this way, try out PDF Element Pro and now we are going to get into the main video. How could we approach a problem like this? Well, maybe at first sight you can already see something. I mean, we have 2 to the x here and 4 is kind of a 2, all right? So 4 is nothing other than 2 squared, but all of this to the x power. And 8 to the x, well, it's also a power of 2, okay? It's the third power, 2 to the third power to the x power. Now. We have modified a problem like this, okay? Ma makes it way easier actually, because if you have uh, something to the something to the something, it's just something to the something something, something times something, okay? So if we have two to the two to the x power, this is two to the two times x power. Same spiel here, two to the three times x power. Now what we could do is we could divide both sides by two to the x power, because what we can also do is we can do this a bit backwards, okay? So bringing our two and three to the outside, this exponent, and now by dividing by two to the x power on both sides, I want you guys to notice that two to the x power is never ever going to be equal to zero for all the x out there in the complex numbers and also the real numbers, etc. It's probably going to be a real solution that we are going to have here. It's never going to be equal to zero. This is why we can divide by it actually it's always created in zero. Okay, let us put this into some notation. It's always strictly created in zero for all x out of the real numbers. Let us divide both sides by two to the x power, resulting in, okay, this is going to give us one plus, okay, two to the x power is going to cancel out on one here. Okay, so two to the x power is equal to, okay, two to the x power squared. I hope you can see where all of this came from, okay? It's, it's just pretty easy arithmetic that we are doing here. Now, maybe you can already see where this is going, but I would like to do a little substitution just to clarify things a bit more. Um, let our two to the x power that we have right here, so basically we have a polynomial in our two to the x power, let us substitute it by, I don't know, um, some function f of x, okay? Let's, let's just call it f. And now we can just plug it into here. Meaning we are going to end up with one plus f being equal to f squared. And now we have a, famous, a pretty famous polynomial on our hands. So now we can just subtract f and one on both sides, resulting in zero being equal to f squared minus f minus one. 
And now we can solve this one right here. We have actually solved it before. It's just uh, our generating polynomial for the Fibonacci numbers. Meaning overall, our zeros of this function are going to be f1 and 2 at the moment are being equal to 1 plus minus the square root of 5 over 2 by using the quadratic formula. And now I want you guys to notice that our f that we have right here is nothing other than 2 to the x power, but we have seen before that 2 to the x power is always strictly greater than 0 for all x in R. Meaning overall we are just going to choose the positive branch of this whole thing. And the positive branch is just 1 plus square root of 5 over 2, meaning it's just our golden ratio. So f1 is equal to, or overall the solution to our 2 to the x power to our polynomial is going to be just our boy phi. And now we can actually plug other stuff into here because we want to solve for x, meaning phi is 2 to the x power. And from this point onwards, we can modify our 2 to the x power because 2 to the x power is just e to the x times the natural log of 2. Okay, let us go to the next blackboard. Meaning 2 to the x power is nothing other than um, e to the x times the natural log of 2 being equal to phi. And now we can simply apply the natural log on both sides to arrive at the natural log of phi being equal to x times the natural log of 2. And basically to arrive at our solution, we are simply going to divide both sides by natural log of 2 because it's not equal to 0. No, no, never, because 2 is not equal to 1. Meaning we are going to get that x is nothing other than the natural log of our golden ratio over the natural log of 2. You can actually modify this a bit more because we have the product of something as the argument of our natural log. This is actually quite an interesting result because our natural log of phi, so x is thus, um, natural log of phi is nothing other than the natural log of 1 plus square root of 5 uh, minus the natural log of 2 over the natural log of 2 overall. And some stuff is going to cancel out. We are going to get this and that, and this is going to be left. Um, natural log of 1 plus the square root of 5 over the natural log of 2 minus 1. And this is quite interesting because we have this false golden ratio right here. So if our natural log were multiplicative, we can actually turn this into our golden ratio yet again. But it doesn't work for those numbers. It should only work for special cases. But this has been it. Don't forget to try out PDF Element Pro. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, recommend, channel if you like. And up until the next video, have a day. Ciao.